Welcome to the My Wish Sunday Race Club. With four race starts, we're going to start with our category four riders, then three, two, and one. Our riders lined up in yellow, that is our category one riders. In green, our category two. In blue, category three. And category four in red. Very, very quickly, up to around 45 kilometers an hour within the first 300 meters of racing. They wanted to get out fast. They got out smoothly. That was a great job. So about a quarter of the way in terms of height gain, over half race distance covered. At the moment, Mr. X100 leading the Category 1 field with a gap of about three seconds back. David Goodall leading Category 4, 42 and a half K done. 41 and a half K done for category three. 40 K completed for the leaders in category two and 39.1, just 900 meters behind. Category one leaders starting to sweep up the riders. Matthias Kalman pushed on early. He went with a K to go. Neville Ross now trying to answer him, kicking at 12 watts per kilo. Newman coming in hot at nine with Caro and Dabben, but Kalman has got it. He sees the banner. Nicholas Orego. He's winding this up. He can see the finishing line. Can he stay clear? Neville Ross is coming at 10 watts per kilo behind him. Neville Ross comes up on his shoulder. He's got on the right hand side. Neville Ross. Neville Ross is going to get it. It's Andrew Neville Ross takes the win here today. Acker is winding at 10 and a half watts per kilo. Now 11. This is a big, big kick. He's got to hold this though. Can there be a response from Goodall? There is. He's coming at 10.6. Has he left it too late? He has. Simon Acker takes the win here in category four. Neville Ross here today looking good. Could it be his day here today in category four? The Anzacs rider pushes up to the top. He goes underneath a Ramadan banner. He's going to come into the finish. It's Andrew Neville Ross of the Anzacs who comes through to take the win. David Goodall here in the My Wu Sunday Race Club, the March finals. He's going to come to the line. It's David Goodall all the way to the line. He wears the polka dot skin suit. He has the race win. Your winner in category four. So welcome to the My Wu Sunday Race Club. We are back once again because, of course, it is qualifier race number one for April. My name is Matt Payne. I'm joined in the studio by Emma Martin. Emma, we're back. We're heading into year three. Uh, today we are going for some fantastic race action on a long old race route. But I'll tell you something, I guarantee there's not going to be a 60k breakaway to take the race win here today because this is going to be an absolute cracker. Our usual 45 kilometers of racing. Um, it's not my favorite course. I think it might oh, be yours, though. Oh, I love this course. We're heading to Columbia today for qualifier one for April. 45 kilometers of racing, 914 meters of climbing, and it looks a little bit like that. So for the first shy of 22 kilometers, it is pan flat except for a few bridges. Then we hit the Medlin climb. It's five and a half kilometers at 6% just over. It's a steep, steep climb. Then we have the flat rolling bumpy section at 31 kilometers. The final climb, 13 and a half kilometers of climbing to the checkered flag, but it is not steep. An average gradient of around three and a half percent. If you've dug too deep early on, you will know. But last time we were here, it was a sprint finish in every category. Why don't you like it, Matt? Um because it's like one half and another half. I like my courses which are which which have something in the early first half. And I think it's about draw so much in that first section. It's very hard to animate the race. And you know me, I love an exciting race where everything goes absolutely crazy. Let's see if category four are gonna send me crazy today because they're gonna be our first riders away. We have uh, some great teams down here with uh, a number of riders representing those teams. We've got up cycled here in strength in debt. Sinaska, Schoberg, Lloyd, Kalman, Mayard in here. Good to see the guys from Brazilian Osma Vaz representing the uh, team from the WTBR. The power have the one and only Jeff Rooney. Will Jeff be the man with the Watts today? Let's see if that's going to kick in, or will it be Anzac's Brett McMurtry? Let's go racing. It's category four. Our race underway here in the Mywoo Sunday Race Club qualifier race number one 
for April. And the pack are out and rolling. Now, Emma, we have seen some big, big race fields. We saw some great racing in our finals as well as in all our qualifiers. And Category 4, yet again, they've got ants in the pants. They can't <laughs> sit still. They're off. Andres Londano is the rider pushing it on at the front, flat and fast out of the gun. And take a look at the stretch on that race field already now, Matt. 49 riders in this race field today. And it is stacked with names. You've mentioned Jeff Rooney and Matthias Kalman, but Andrew Neville Ross is here. David Pino, David Winfield, who's been riding really, really well recently. Felipe Tortoretto. Uh, Callan Gad is here. Allport Brito, Dadson Pino, Montoya. Toya, Simon Acker's on the start sheet, and so is Stephen Newman. So expecting some really strong racing today. Now, Lou Colport has had a little flooding this week, but nice to see that he's backing up on his bike and he sorted his garage out. It's not looking too wet in there. We, we Thank you, Luke, for uh, updating everybody and letting us know uh, that you were under about 10 foot of water at one point, but uh, it's looking pretty dry. He's got the power. He's got the 240 mains. I'm not sure whether he's powered by a dynamo or not. He's got it plugged in, but he's absolutely flying. And Luke in with the gang here today. Now, Category 4, Emma. Uh, if you look back over the course of the last few weeks and into those finals, we always see with Category 4 some really, really fast racing. And I know we, we struggle to cover every race category mm. because there's just so much action going on non-stop. Any particular rider, if you had to sum up and say, these were my riders Ooh. of the March, which was the low one because we have four qualifiers in our finals, which would be your riders? Pick sort of three riders that you would say really sort of stood out for you. Well, I think um, Nicol Kansara has been getting better and better, but he's in Category not in category Come on, four. category four. I know. Okay. So Andrew <laughs> Neville Ross has been riding really, yep. really, really well. Great great wins and, and yep. looking really on form. Uh David Winfield. Yeah. For me. We we talk a lot about um the younger Winfield in category two. Um, but David Winfield in category four has stepped up and been making the top spots of the top five. So really great to see him riding really strongly as well. Um, Kalman's been going well, but yes, he has indeed. In fact, take a look at that. Matthias Kalman is on our screen as well. Uh, so he's one of my top picks for today. Um, who else? I think Allport's going to do well today. He's come back down from Category oh, 3. And we got a wave as well from Matthias yeah. Kalman. And waving back, of course, always. But Goodall <laughs> rode brilliantly last week and has indeed been rewarded with progression to Category 3 today. Oh, well, you can talk about it when we go to Category 3 then. So, uh, Matthias Kalman on the screen. Interesting to see. Nice gaming chair there. I've got uh, Chair Envy at the moment. I actually stood <laughs> up in the studio. Uh, but that is a very nice uh, gaming chair. He's got sat there at the uh, desk. You can see the fan housing just at the side they're going to be keeping him cool will he be able to stay cool right through? well we've got a long running to the climb so it's about conserving energy staying smart on the way through not losing this race our category four should be doing that at the moment they're at two and a half kilometers nearly our category three will be the next to go they are the riders in blue they're lined up they know that they are now getting in to those last couple of minutes but Category 4 making the way through. Now, we've got five sprints today. I mean, they don't we count did. for anything in terms of prizes, in terms of physical prizes, but, but they do count as a virtual prize with a skin suit. in a green skin suit. And, Indeed. Uh, you know, there's a lot of bragging rights to be had by that green skin suit, as well as the polka dot skin suit, which is awarded for the climbing segments. And it's a good way to actually open up your legs. We've seen Diego Navarro uh, attack at the moment. He's gone to uh, just shy of 10 watts per kilo. Now it's yeah. 10 and a half, 12 watts per kilo, 13. I'll tell you what, he's continued to accelerate at least halfway, if not three quarters of the way yeah. through that segment. Now it's good going because remember the sprint segment, uh, the first one is a 300 meter segment. So that is good going at uh, a time of 20 uh, seconds, point three zero seven. So category four underway and through the first sprint. Category three about to line up. Oh, we have the Italian Espresso. I have my Espresso here in the studio uh, with uh, Alessio Caigula and Paolo uh, Cusimano representing them. Level Racing, we've got Rimborg, Tuica and Bassedi. Now, Bassedi's been really, really strong. I've yep. been really impressed by yep. how well he's racing. Nerik Rimborg, I mean, he's just such a known entity. We know he's always going to go hard. Sweden, Finland and Switzerland represented by the Level Racing team mm -hmm. on the way through. 
Well, they are indeed in the blocks at the moment. The legs are warm, the hearts are pumping, the legs go. They kick down hard and out of the start pen go category three, the blue jerseys sweeping out of the start pen and onto the course. Well, they are five minutes following the category four riders. There's 10 minutes till category two start and uh, 44 riders, Matt, on the start sheets of category three today. And obviously Italian espresso and level racing. But uh, Dyduch is here, Paul Garin. Goodall has come up from category four, which is fabulous to see. Henry East is on the start sheet. So is Jack Staples, who took a fourth in the final last month. Johan Moreno, who took a second in the final last month. And take a look at that. Johan Moreno is indeed kicking on and pushing hard at the start of this race. Not content with second place in the final. He wants to make the action in qualifier one in April as well. And he's doing a good job of that. They've already distanced one rider off the back of the group. You can see that on the left-hand side of the screen, that blue dot just disappearing off the base of that radar view. And at the moment, Eric Rimbaud go with Johan Moreno, the two riders very close together. And I think Rimbaud really wants it. He He's on great form. Yeah. He, he's gone from being the sprint king almost to being the, uh, the, the man in with a chance for the overall win. Well, doing a lot of racing at the moment as well in real life on the road, multiple stage races as well as here on the Sunday Race Club and always trying to fit the Sunday Race Club into whatever other schedules he's got on his racing. So it's fantastic to see. But you know what? At some point, all that racing really pays off and the form comes really strongly. Moreno and Rimborg here side by side and they are really leading the charge today in Category 3. And it's Johan Moroni, you can see on the bottom left-hand side of your screen in that My Wusha jersey. His uh, looks a little bit better than uh, when we have to say get well to. And that is uh, Jay Viner. Jay, of course, uh, riding for the United uh, Arab Emirates team, the UAE Emirates team, and uh, taking a uh, tumble get well soon. But it's some gr good news coming out from the uh, hospital this week. And uh, I don't think the My Wusha was on the uh, seat of the pants of his skin, so he's going to be in a good state after... Uh, uh, that tumble, but uh, good to hear you starting to get better and uh, sending you uh, big congratulations. Now, back to the racing. The action is absolutely crazy at the moment, and we are seeing a big, big kick here because at the moment, Simon Bradley is trying to make the move across to Eric Rimborg along with Johan Moreno, and this is a oh, very dangerous straight move. straight up and over the top, Matt. It is. He's really, really gone for that. He's absolutely pushing at some serious pace. So up and over the top goes Bradley Moreno, goes with him. Rojas is here as well. And Arrego is kicking out 7.7 .7 watts per kilo at the moment because he really doesn't want anyone to go clear. But the only thing it's doing is stretching the group. Nobody clear in Category 3 at the moment. But the pace is so hot on the front of this. You'd think there was an exciting race at the start, Matt. I, I tell you something. You, I know. I was like uh, throwing the challenge down a little bit by saying, well, you know, there's nothing happens at the start. But you know what? They are really confident. Look at the effort that's coming in from Devia here. They have accepted the challenge laid down by Matt in the commentary box and Rojas kicking on here. Up and out of the saddle in real life. Advertar following as well as he's continuing to put the power down and keep the pace high. Coming up to the first sprint, the Amazon Lake Sprint. Can he take the time? You know, it was Navarro who set the pace at 9.6 watts per kilo average going through this sprint section. Oh, look at that. They've backed off. They have backed off. You can't keep that effort going non-stop all the way. I mean, it was almost a sprint effort. And now with that stretch on, the problem is if you have put a big effort in and somebody else takes it up, and Mer I'll tell you something, Moreno has got a kick here. He's gone again over the uh, top to go through. He might get the fastest time uh, as they go through. It's uh, showing it's going to be Taylor Gonsolin, who's a bit further down mm. in that pack. But he's beaten the time here because he's got a 19.388. Yep. So that is a faster time coming through. He has indeed. Well, Talking about times, Matt, last time the men were here on the Paso Alto uh, 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 was the alert. February final. Okay. okay. And uh, category three, 10 seconds separated the top 18 riders at the finish line. You could have thrown a large blanket over them all. A large virtual blanket. So say, the, say that time again. 10 seconds. Yep separated the top 18 riders in category three 
last time we were on the Paso Alto. That is a scary, scary number. Uh, and if it happens again, I'm going to be calling that solo because, of course, it is Ramadan and uh, I hope it's all going well for everybody who is uh, uh, making the most of the month of Ramadan and fasting. And uh, if you are, we are coming in towards the end. This will be the last of the Ramadan time slot shows. We should be going back to the standard time slots next week, which also means that uh, Emma and I will be both be doing all of both shows rather than doing a split show as we're doing today. Now, talking of splits, yeah. looks like Category 4 has split across the road already, which is absolutely crazy. And Johan Moreno and Daniel Cadiz are trying <laughs> to split this, and they are doing that. Before the they're, first bridge. They're, they're breaking riders out the back of this group. I mean, we are seeing rider after rider disappearing off. They are making this tough. And this is the thing for me. There was a really interesting conversation going uh, regarding stats based on the climb of the Ebel Hafid uh, coming up at the end of the finals and basically using that to to extrapolate out what was happening in all the race. And the point I, I, I tried to make, maybe not the clearest of points, but it was certainly my theory, is that actually what happens now before you get to a final climb is really can change that racing because if it's absolutely frantic like this, you cannot tell me that if they ride like they're riding at the moment, they are not doing damage to some of those riders and that can change the outcome and how the rest of the race is ridden. It's certainly, I would imagine, going to bring those times right down. But let's put it this way. Riders race in the Sunday race car week in, week out. And well, if you listen to um, some of the podcasts with some of the top riders in category one, they'll tell you that riding the Sunday Race Cup has increased their level of performance overall uh, quite significantly because of the type of effort that is required. And that type of effort does not matter whether you are in category four, category three, category two, or category one. It is all relative. But I tell you what is not relative at the moment, and it's the pace in this category four race. The stretch is on, the groups are split. And that screen on the bottom left is absolutely fabulous and showing us what is going on in this race at the moment. Luke Holport, well, he is working hard already just to stay in with that group because that's the leading group at the moment. But there are at least three more groups behind them on the road. I reckon that group is about 18 to 20 riders strong at the moment. We're just trying to get a good look at that. But it is really hard to stay in that group behind. There are actually more riders behind than are in front. However, they've set off early. This could be decisive very, very early. And we've seen another split, another group yeah. not staying with that leading pack. The power and the pace that is being put down at the front of Category 4 is absolutely doing a lot of damage here today. They were at nine kilometres. They've uh, covered pretty much about double the distance that the uh, Category 3 riders have done. Our next riders will be Category 2 and 1. A longer gap between Categories 3 and 2 than there is between uh, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. Wow, absolutely frantic racing. And uh, I may have to go find a hat to eat uh, because at the moment it's <laughs> absolutely manic. Okay, Let's go on to Category 2 riders. Now, another massive race field here today. We've got some great teams. We've got the T1G squad. Francis Silpino, one of our longest serving riders, in fact, uh, is uh, Francis Silpino. Good to see him on the start line. The Watt Colonels, well, they're going to be headed up by Filippo Quadrelli, another regular on the uh, race scene. We've got the Road Warriors here. So you've got Henry Oya and uh, Jonas Bjarhead in there. We've also got the Wattage Wizards. Ruben Dunn in there. I mean, that's mm. a who's who in yep. itself. Um, throw in the likes of uh, Ahmed Daltonaji or Sandra Hemden. Uh, we've got it going through. I mean, we've got such a massive list of riders who would ride for, like, the Falcons team. But behind in the general mass, it's... Oh, there's no general mass Is there any rider here, that you, you haven't actually marked as being potential uh, winner on your sheet there, Well, Emma? 49 riders in Category 2 today alongside those five teams. Juan Martin Messer is coming up from Category 3 into Category 2. It's going to be really interesting to see how he goes. Bengston is here. Kane, Gombert, Sultan, Yuki, Sir... Kranich, Betty, uh, who else is here? Custom Mayor is here. Uh, Linda Millerstick is here, who went really, really well at this course last time. Angarita, Van He, Von Haren, Kochkov, Simmons, Graves, Walter, Clays, all these riders in the mix, plus others. There is not one rider on this start sheet, Matt, who I don't think could really do some damage here today. Pretty much like that Category 3 race, the last time Category 2 raced Paso Alto, 
20 seconds over the top 15 riders. So can they repeat it? It's category two now about to go from the start. They've seen categories four and three go like crazy and really break the race up. Time for category two to hit the road. And we are away in with Billy Peter Milostic at the moment, just coming out from the pens. They're going to take that tight right and turn and head away. The initial run out here, one of my favourite parts of riding in the Colombian world. Very different riding it to racing it, that is for certain, when you're out on the worlds of my whoosh. And uh, great to see so many people downloading and joining in the race. And a lot of people jumping on board with Apple TV. If you were on a different planet for the last couple of weeks, uh, then I do need to let you know, not only have we had two of the road classics with uh, the uh, Tour of Flanders and the uh, Paris-Roubaix, but also, more importantly, Apple TV, 4K, if you've got that, you can download my wish onto it and you can use your Apple TV to play my wish to jump on board well, and to ride. I'll tell you something about the number of people who have been in contact with me who haven't raced the Sunday Race Club before and since Apple TV has gone live have got in touch to ask, you know, tell me more about my whoosh, tell me more about Sunday Race Club, you know, tell me more about the style of racing, what do I need to do, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, really good to see that it has stirred up a lot of interest and we're starting to see more and more riders come through. And I think that's the thing, isn't it? The more options, the more potential avenues to get onto my whoosh, the more we're going to see people coming in who maybe have a limited devices or, or want to use one device for one thing and one device for another. And for me, that is really, really critical. We've seen such big growth across my whoosh in the last two yeah. years. We know, oh, yes. you know, it, it, not just in terms of the, um, the constant development of the platform, the constant say, development of streaming, but also the number of riders. Can I just say the uh, first women's race that Matt commentated on two years ago yep. almost to the day had 27 riders how many riders have we got 118 today there you go so that's almost five times no yeah almost five times you were many. trying to do some maths there weren't you i know well, it's steady well Matt's <laughs> trying to do some maths henry yeast is racing the windows open the fan is blowing and the effort is hard because i tell you something he's in the front group of this category three race it's been hot 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 under the uh, pedals and uh, he's needed that fan big stuff the start of this race only 8.8 .8 kilometers into the 45 kilometer race 12 and a half minutes of racing gone but it's been a hard 12 and a half minutes really really fast and you can see at the moment as the riders go out from the peds in the green of category two the riders in a category four are coming in the opposite direction in ones and twos if they couldn't see before if they weren't watching the feed i tell you something they're going to know now that that race has been absolutely smashed to smithereens by yeah. the riders in category four and now we're starting to see another push on the front we're just in with hassan sultan a rider who has really we, we know he's a strong rider i'm waiting to see hassan sultan really come out of the top of category two i can't imagine it's going to be all that long before we see him back get to his best against interesting to see francis pino right up at the front water clays in here Jonas bjar head working well messes in quadrelli yeah. looking good and phil graves as well but at the moment uh, it looks like just betty He's the one who's going to lead them into the sprint. He's got, at the moment, about six seconds on the main group. And it's uh, only, what, two, one second back to McCarroll, who we're in with at the moment. So Ian McCarroll chasing Ricardo Betty behind them. The group are coming. Hoyos, Mayer, Quintero trying to chase them down. They're going to go into the sprint. There we go. Kick down the uh, sprint. 300 metres of distance. They've got to give it some big welly, though, to take away the green skin suit to replace the green jersey. And at the moment, Betty at 7.9 watts per kilo. He's got to hold that. Now, because he had attacked before, he's not able to, to put that sort of 14 watts per kilo kick that we saw from our lower category riders. It's much, much harder to do, isn't it, when you've been on the, on the rivet all the way? It is. It is much, much harder to do because you're, you're, you're uh, trying to push off of a higher pace and push off of more tired legs. And while Category 2 are taking the road just like Category 3 and Category 4, pushing hard from the gun, let's see what Category 1 are going to do. Well, we have our big team in here, the big team at the moment, the Coalition oh, oh, oh. Jaw. Last finals winner, Daniel Chirk. We've got David Tobert, Lionel Vujasi, Michael Kaminsky and Ollie Jones for the painting. 
Toast his squad on Jakob's crystal theme. Jakob Bjorkland and Mikhail Plantero. The uh, UAE clan team, well, they have their three musketeers in Mr. X100, Pablo Popovich and SS. Who will take this out? It's time to go racing. Category one, away they go. They are up and out for qualifier one in April. Now, Coalition Elf Jaw, the squad on form at the moment. All five of their riders in the March final finished in the top 10. Seriously on form at the moment. Turek, Talbot, Vujasin, Kaminsky and Jones. It's got to be the dream esports squad at the moment, but it's Christoph Thiem giving it pushing hard out of the pen at the moment. Vidal Mayer, now he always does a quick start and really likes to see the early action moving. Moritz Ritter. Now, Moritz Ritter has come up from Category 2. We've had a little bit of movement. Uh, really interesting. We talked about one Martin Messer coming up from Cat 3 to Cat 2. Ritter coming up from Cat 2 to Cat 1. Great to see that movement. Now, Osborne here. Nudson coming back into form last week and really progressing now back through. Safra Zadie's been on fantastic form this last month, and so has Stefan Van Elst. Well, let's see who will take this out at the moment. It is going to be Pocket. It's going to be Ritter. It's going to be Theme and Mayor at the moment. But Ollie Jones, Ollie, um, I hope you've, um, I hope you are uh, uh, doing this as a, a brief interview because Ollie Jones. Did I not see somewhere that Ollie Jones had um, had a very important day? Yeah, she's me. I apologise, Mr. and Mrs. Jones. Uh, Mr. Payne here seems to have missed the date of the nuptials, but some beautiful, beautiful photos. There's some great pictures media. coming out. There of, are. But it was a few lake. weeks ago now. Was it really? It was indeed. But uh, That hey, time flies when you're having fun. Well, it, and or it just takes a long time to get your wedding pictures done. So uh, congratulations, guys. And uh, it looked absolutely stunning. Now, Hayden Puckett at the moment, just uh, keeping those uh, revs going at the moment. He's... Uh, Really interesting to watch here. 80 revs per minute. He's uh, sat quite upright on that bike, just making sure he's sitting comfortably, just holding on to the hoods. For those people who maybe don't uh, uh, ride at home, the reason to put the towel over the top is because uh, it can be incredibly corrosive if uh, your perspiration <laughs> drops from you down onto your bike, particularly if you've got carbon fiber bars or aluminium bars, you'll find there's a lot of damage can be done, particularly if you don't check your handlebar tape. So uh, one of the reasons to do that is to just stop any damage to the bike. Now, one man who I think is going to do damage to the pedals, uh, it's going to be Jocelyn Betty, who is uh, at the moment trying to continue to push with McCarroll for company. That gap, Emma, though, it's opened up. It is 11 seconds now in this gap here. Two riders clear now in Category 2. Betty, who we can see on our screen, one of those. McCarroll sat right tight to his wheel. 10 seconds back, and they're not pushing on as strongly behind, actually, Matt. That group seeming happy to let these two riders be out at the front. Well, 10 seconds is not huge when you look at the climb that's coming oh, there up. There was a little bit of Big a chat split. going on there from There Betty. was, I not know. Not sure who he's talking to, but I'm he's definitely talking to someone. He's got to be talking to Ian McCarroll, surely, here, because if the two are working together here, this is amazing stuff. You see, he's out of the saddle. He's just dancing on those pedals, using the body weight to keep the power down, to keep the pressure on. Uh, Betty, the, the Brazilian rider, really is putting the pressure on to the rest of Category 2. In Category 1, a more compact bunch coming in to this sprint at the moment. They're just about to hit 2.5 kilometers, which means they're just coming into the Amazon Lake Sprint, and they're going to hit the start of this uh, sprint at a somewhat pedestrian for Category 1, 40 kilometers an hour. Not fast. So let's see what they do. Look at this bunch. It's across the road. We're just starting to see the wind-up. But with these riders, we know they're capable of much more than three, three and a half watts per kilo. That is the pace that's being put down. And I'm not seeing anybody taking a fly. There could be a very easy green jersey to be had at the start of the race here. Just seen a little squeeze at the end. That was a very tactical push there. Because as they've come through, Mr. X100 has gone through that group. Has he done enough to take away a top spot in the timings? It was going to be very, very tight. And now we see an attack off the front. Looks like Von Haren has gone over the top. Or is it? It isn't. It's Pucker who's gone. Pucker has gone here. So yeah. it is Hayden Pucker going on the offensive. They waited until that 
uh, straight have been complete. The sprint was done, and off they've gone on the offensive. And now the group behind have to decide whether to chase. But you can see from the times at the moment on your screens that the riders in categories uh, three, four, and two, mm -hmm. with Taylor Gonzalez taking the fastest time, that 19.388, Eight have annihilated the times category one although there was a kick at the end it wasn't sustained enough throughout the duration of the sprint and that is what has taken its toll so Gonsolin from Navarro from Schoberg and Valencia the category uh, three rider just ahead of those three category four riders a little bit further behind her, Yusuf uh, Mirza Al Hamadi on the uh, move in this leading group. Took nicely in here, keeping those watts in green, top center of your screen. If they're in green, that's good. It means that our riders are hiding in the draft. But in front of this group, we are starting to see riders trying to bridge across to our leaders. The third rider kicking away from the group as they come into the bridge. Will I be able to make it count and get across that group? Will we see Al Hamadi do exactly the same thing here and squeeze his way not only to the front of the group, but bridge across to the escapees who are up in front? Pucket and Ritter at the moment, seven seconds down the road. Vidal Mare at three seconds. And this, well, this is what's left of the chasing group. Well, I'll tell you something. Puck is making sure he's on form for the qualifiers for the US team or indeed for the public qualification system for the esports world championships this year from my whoosh down in october well i'll tell you what emma that's a nice little link in to something that we have talked about quite extensively and i know that uh, uh, it's probably something that's really really good to share with everybody it may well be that uh, as we see this chase come, people have not necessarily uh, kept uh, up with all of the information coming out so give us a quick rundown on where we're at in terms of what we know about the uh, what we know about and what we can say publicly uh, about the uh, championships that are coming up. Well, I don't know which way around to do this. Shall we do qualification pathway first? Start at the first? beginning and finish at the end. So qualification pathway, National Federation's UCI qualification system should account for around eighty percent of the competitors coming in to the World Esports uh, final and semi-final later on this year. Uh, all of the national federations have their own numbers in terms of allocations for women, allocations for men, and they'll have their own qualification system, which they will obviously publish like they do with all other categories. Um, there is a public pathway. There are going to be six races throughout May and June 2024. The top 25 riders in those will progress through to the semi-finals alongside those who have qualified through their national federations. So somebody like uh, Che Hoala, who's in here, currently riding for Germany. He's a rider who might be selected for his nation for Germany, but he also could jump in via the qualification system, which is going to be open to the riders on my whoosh for everybody, not selected selected by your national federation and it means Che may well qualify that way instead. Okay, so let's say Che makes it through and uh, he's in and he's made it through to the semi-finals. He gets through the win in the semi-finals, first of all. What's the sort of time scale there? Beginning of September. So early September, you're going to be into the semi-finals. And then we have the finals coming up a little bit later. Yes. So semi-finals, beginning of September, two stages, around 150 men and around 150 women will be there. Stage one, we'll see that go down to 80 riders progressing to stage two, when those final 20 riders will go through to the finals in October which will be live in Abu Dhabi. And the date of that, well, that's the 26th of October. So those are our finals. 26th of October, it promises to be really, really good. Lots of great ideas from a lot of people out there about what we're going to see. A Lots of really interesting speculation as well. I can't wait to we reach the point where we can tell you absolutely everything about it. Uh, that's going to be a little way off yet. However, expect it to be another thrilling installment. Wow. Of course, my wish is a partner for the UCI for 2024, 25 and 26. Will we see Ollie Jones there? He's currently very active on well, the front you know of this that chase hat group. You were talking about eating. Yes. I think I'll eat it if I don't see Ollie Jones at the World Championships. 
You heard it here first. Put the date in your diary. It is the uh, 7th of April, and Emma has said she's going to eat a hat if Holly Jones doesn't make the World Champs finals. Well, we will see. Okay, through the next sprint, uh, which is our Amazon Bridge Sprint, the 200-meter segment, and uh, you can see all of a sudden Category 1 on being not on your screens are absolutely dominating the top. Justin Osborne, Mistakes 100, Christoph Kroll, Daniel Churek, Jakob Bjorklund, Said Safasetti, as well as Christoph Thiem in the mix. Top eight riders through. And in fact, uh, Frederick Schoberg yeah. had to really nail it to get up there uh, to get in to the top nine riders there. But interesting mix there. Mr. X100 is looking good today. He's right up in the mix in the sprints. We don't always see that. We often see him using it to attack. At the moment, that's not happening. And in fact, a rider, I was just talking about maybe moving up. But that's use of Mr. Al Hamadi. He, at the moment, is further back. He's with Cogburn at the moment. And uh, they have got a big push to do to get back in. I think that's a big ass today, uh, given how aggressive the racing is. What's your distance today? I think you're in trouble. I think I agree with you completely. And these small... Put that in your diary as well. I know. These small <laughs> bridges really play a part in this course in uh, Colombia. The Paso Alto really does play a part. Now, Category 1 lighting their touch paper through that sprint. Now getting a call off as they head past the waterfall. Category 2, the pack is looking strong and rolling well. They're 11.2 kilometres into the race at 18.1. Well, that's the leader in the Category 3 race. And Category 4, they are the leaders on the road at the moment because they were the first riders out of our start pen today. And as they are heading into that climb that hits at 21.9 kilometers. But uh, we're just dropping in here with uh, uh, Julian uh, Quintero. And I'll tell you something, that is a shot off your balcony if you yep. have ever got one. That has to be so far the, the best. What, yeah, I think that might be the best backdrop. I hope that's not green screen. And that is definitely for real because that is amazing. Yeah, fantastic to I see our Colombian floor, rider. What floor is his flat on? Yeah, because that's quite high up. So do let us know. <laughs> that's a long way up. Do let us know what floor that is, buddy, when uh, you watch this back and uh, tell us where, uh, how high up you are. That's an amazing backdrop, isn't it? With the, it's uh, with the jungle in the background there, and then with the uh, tower blocks. I would uh, estimate he's he's a fair way of looking at the tower blocks behind him there. Uh, if you move those well, across, not uh, quite altitude training. But you never know. We don't know where it is. No, if that I know. Is, I if that is halfway up the mountain, then yep. that could well be. Now, that'll make him uh, stunning. I wonder if we're going to see any altitude training for when the riders go down to the race finals for the World Championships. Because it's something that is done in, in lots of disciplines, in mountain biking, track, well, in road. I bet. If you go down to, I mean, uh, you know, you don't get more sea level realistically, do you? Than Abu Dhabi. I bet. The, Unless we do it on the top the floor of a skyscraper. Are being planned already. Well, yes, I would hope they are planning that already. I hope they've got all the information at their fingertips of what they're going to do, how they're going to plan it, and where they're going to be. Will they be on this course here in Colombia for the finals? Well, it's uh, going to be very interesting to see where we end up. We are, though, for Qualifier 1 here in the Paso Alto, and the first riders now making their way up onto the Medellin climb. Two distinct climbs, the one on the left in the red, shorter and steeper, very consistent gradient, more variation, but a, a gradually lesser climb on the Bogota climb with the FRB. That's a yellow section in the middle there, Emma. Uh, what does FRB stand for? Flat rolling bumpy. Named by Emma? Only understood by Emma. <laughs> Probably, yes. So, now, who will be able to make uh, their way through that FRB section? Category 4 will be the first to hit it on the current form. They're into the climb. We're starting to see the leading group fracture again, if it could fracture any more. Meanwhile, Taylor Gonsolin, yeah. he's our sprint leader. He has taken every Look sprint so far. Look, he's know, looking I good, have, I actually have put a little mark by Taylor Gonsolin on my sheet today, thinking, actually, this could be a course for him. And I think he's got the same idea as me, you know, because he is really pushing on at the front of this Category 3 race with Daniel Cadiz. You know, they're now 14 seconds clear of the chase group. They're not at the first climb yet, and it could all change. But they are giving themselves a decent sliding room before they hit the Medlin climb. 
I don't think Gonzalez needs that sliding room, though, to be honest, because he is such a strong rider. But we've seen him on really good form. We saw him that in the My Wish Championships. You can take a look back at those uh, nearly a year ago with that one million uh, prize fund up for grabs across the men's, the women's, and all of the age category racing. Now, let's uh, take a look at our next sprint, Jungle Sprint, and look at that. Yeah. Ritter and Bjorkler, who we saw on the uh, move there, have uh, jumped in in seventh and eighth places, respectively, but Gonzalez again with that fastest time through 700 watts for him which is 9.3 watts per kilo but critically the fastest time 13.227 and if you're looking at that going well how can people put more and less watts or power remember it's the dependent on your physiology it's also dependent on the power but most importantly it's dependent on how you ride the platform if you are able to draft the entire section through there you will go quicker or go from the back to the front of the group and that draft absolutely critical session those times and we've seen that time and time again well we're in with mr x100 at the moment in this leading group of category one riders we've got two riders just hanging off the front uh, post that sprint and uh, well we're in a nice big long flat section at the moment at 11.1 one kilometers this is the transition between the jungle sprint and the san gil sprint uh, which will come at 15 kilometers into this race that's a 300 meter section and that'll be the next key section on this race course for category one category two at 14.5 kilometers well they're 400 meters now off of that sprint section of field graves is right up at the front here with largo uh, with McCarroll and uh, Quintero. Van He is there as well. In fact, that's a very large group of Category 2 riders still at the front of the race. Category 3, we've got the two riders clear at the moment. One in blue, one resplendent in the sprint skin suit, not to be confused with a Category 2 rider. And Category 4 at 23.5 kilometres. They're the first group of riders on the climb. They are indeed the first on the climb, but the fastest throughout the entire race should be our Category 1, and they're starting to head the way down in towards that subterranean cave complex to make the way in and through, away from the coffee trail area of the Colombian world here on my wish, making the way down into all of the different parts of the trail. Now, if... Uh, you are thinking, who are we likely to see? Realistically, in those finals, we should be seeing these riders in Category 1, shouldn't we? And it's a different format in lots of ways, isn't it, for the finals? Yes, it is very much indeed. Very, very different to the Sunday Race Cup. And so it should be, because I think the Sunday Race Cup is of its own nature. It is the premier series. It is indeed. We are here every week giving away tons of money with some amazing ratings and some fantastic action. Uh, and you and me as well, and our, <laughs> and our colleagues as well. And uh, have to say a big welcome. I think we're going to be joined by James. We'll be uh, covering the racing in French. So if you're a native uh, French speaker, uh, James should be joining us, I think, next week. And of course, our But Arabic if you want colleagues... to practice your English, please stay with us. Yes, we, we'd, we'd <laughs> much rather you stayed with us, obviously, than practicing your French and your Arabic. But feel free but to do I either. I might listen to James to see if I can make my French better. It may be the case. I've listened to the Arabic on a number of occasions and I have learnt loads from them. Yeah, I have to well, say, really good. Well, that's always it, isn't it? It is. Yeah. So, uh... Emma's just, 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 just thought about me know. speaking Arabic, haven't you? It's just like, that is just, that's totally fried, Emma. So I will show off when we go to the finals, Emma. Uh, okay. If we're putting words to the action Well, there. I'll tell you something. I am very <clears throat> shortly going to be going to the women's start because Indeed. the women's race will start very very shortly but before i do go one of the things i did want to say um you know we're in colombia today on the paso alto uh, the number of colombian riders that we have is actually quite significant on the sunday race yep. club but what i think is significant and i did this for the first time the other day and i actually counted how many nationalities we had on the start sheets for the sunday race club okay. 31 different nationalities today in this men's race 31 nationalities in the Sunday 176 race. riders, 31 nationalities. That is a truly global area. Next question will come for you next week will be, Emma, how many 
continents have we got represented? Bear in mind, we aren't going to have anybody from Antarctica. We will see. Uh, so as Emma has just uh, hinted, she's going to be making her way very shortly over to uh, the other studio because she's going to be starting the women's race. Quick reminder, this is the last of the split shows for the moment because uh, we are coming towards the end of Ramadan. We'll be heading in to Eden. Looking forward to uh, that period, I'm sure, uh, our colleagues uh, who are in the uh, studios uh, in uh, the UAE uh, will be uh, ready for that as well. I'm sure they've been in, uh, uh, making the most of this Ramadan period. And we have been really enjoying doing the yeah. split shows as well. And uh, hopefully you will join Emma uh, either live or maybe watch the end of the show and then start all over again with the women's uh, with Emma. And I will be joining Emma there. But uh, for the moment, as our category will go into the tunnels, uh, Emma is going to uh, leave us and I will be quiet for a few seconds, I promise. Well, it may not yet be as iconic as Elvis in the building, but Emma has indeed left the studio giggling away uh, at my stupidity as she heads off to start the women's race. So uh, here for the My Wish Sunday Race Club for qualifier number one in April on what has fast established itself as a classic Sunday race course with that flat 21.9k start. The first climb, the first categorized climb of the meddling climb, the second categorized climb, the Bogota climb, with that flat rolling bumpy section in between. Our Category 2 riders, the biggest bunch at the moment, they're coming into the Montbox City Sprint at 18.1k. This is a 300 metre long section. Now, as this uh, big bunch made the way through, you can see the pace is being picked up once again. The riders really using this to wind the legs up to give themselves a stretch out. And here, Van Haren and Don are battling it out at the front here. I'm not sure who's going to take this. They are side by side. Alvarez has come through very quickly from behind here. It could well be that he's our fastest rider. Quick reminder, the time is a snapshot of the time through that segment. At the moment, the fastest time overall, it looks like that's being held by uh, Taylor Gonsolding still. He really has been winding up all the way through that section as Category 1. Well, they're a whole sprint behind. They are currently just making their way in at 15.5k through the San Gil Sprint. This uh, takes the riders in and through another 300-metre section at the moment. Moritz Ritter and Vidal Mer are your race leaders in Category 1 who are going through at the front of that pack. But you can see on the left-hand side of your screen, they're all pretty close together. Bjorklund, he's kicked over the top. They came into that together. Bjorklund should have the fastest time. He had a decent gap on this group. Hayden Pucker, Arnie Jacobs and co. chasing through there. And Bjorklund has the fastest time in Category 1. But again, not right up there. Gonsolin only third on that sprint. The Category 3 rider headed by Ruben Dodd and Diego Navarro. The Category 2 and Category 3 riders with Navarro taking top spot. Don taking second and Gonsolin taking third. Very little to separate the riders going through because the first six riders separated by 0.7 of a second. And it shows you just how close it is at the front now. Back with Category 1 as we come out the other side of the big tunnels and we start to make our way into the far side of Colombia. We're not far away from actually from the base of the climb. You can see at the moment this group is split because we have a three leaders clear. We have Ritter, Bjorklund and uh, I think it is uh, going to be met at the front. They are the uh, leaders at the moment. They have got the gap on this group and say Safrazeli has got to uh, keep his eye out here. You can't let riders like Vidal May go down the road too far. Turn Bjorklund for company. 11 seconds the gap and that is a dangerous group. And with this distance to the uh, climb, they've got to uh, work together and that's the signal that's been put down there by Vidal Mayer. Take your turn, turn and turn about, bit and whichever way you want to call it. It's time to work together and try and extend that gap. Hope that the bunch behind are going to hesitate. And at the moment, you can see there is a speed difference between the riders. We're going to have to see if that chasing pack pick it up. Mr. X100 starting to move through this group. It's nearly uh, six watts per kilo at the moment. 
He's really started to push on here, and that really has started to wind things up. Michael Kaminsky sitting in the wheels. The Coalition Alpha Gior superstar from Poland. He's right in that mix, but the pursuit is on. Mare, Bjorklund, Ritter, they are the three riders on the left of your screen. That gap at the moment is about 200 metres separating the two groups. It's not a huge amount at the moment. The pack behind are looking still reasonably composed. They're not worried about this too much. If the pressure was on in that chase group, it would be a longer, thinner line. The riders on the front, though, they are really working hard here. You can see a big heart rate difference, in fact, between uh, Nico, who's at 125 beats here, and Ritter, who's at nearly 170. That's a big all difference, but that is the difference in pace. They've got the full length of that last straight between them, and as they come around that turn, Mayer wants to keep this up uh, nearer to that six watts per kilo marker. They've got to take it in turns on the front, use the draft shelter when they are not leading this out, and they are out of sight and out of mind. They're going to be through the chicane here and into the sprint before the chasing group come around that 90 degree right hand turn which they've just come around and you can see they've got a left bend a right bend you can see it on your uh, radar map down on the left hand side the leaders are going to come under the banner now this sprint here at 18k it's a 200 sorry 300 meter sprint and if they go through at about the right time which they have that means it's just sub 300 meters separating them out and look at the difference in the avatars effort you can see these riders all set up, sat across the group. There's plenty of freewheeling. There's plenty of taking it easy. The watts per kilo, I've just seen a 2.1, a 2, 2.8 watts per kilo, which for Category 1 is basically out for a stroll. They are not pressurizing now. They are making sure they save energy. And it is giving our three breakaway riders a chance to go clear. Bjorklund even though he wasn't going for the sprint and was winding it to try and keep clear, he has gone through with the eighth fastest time, but good to see Navarro, Don, and Gonsolin. They are the three riders in one, two, and three, and that really is interesting interesting to see that we've got a uh, Colombian, a Belgian, and a rider from the United States in there, followed by the German rider uh, who's coming through. In fact, Schober has just gone through and uh, jumped up into the top three as of Van Haren. It shows you that these chasing riders are coming through very quickly. So really interesting watching the uh, different riders, the different parts of the uh, sprints here, the Montpoc City Sprint, the last sprint before we go on to our climbs. So those Judges, this green skin suits of our sprint leaders are determined. And that means that Moritz Ritter on the left of your screen in that green skin suit is the sprint winner in category one. And he'll be carrying that green skin suit to the top. Now, this can be a real advantage because... When you're in that green skin suit, it's very easy for the rest of the riders at a long distance shot to confuse you with a category two rider. It's very easily done, believe me. And that means it can be very difficult to spot. Now, Hayden Pucker, the first of the riders to blink to decide enough is enough. It's time to move 28 seconds. The gap up the road in front, four seconds, the gap behind Kaminsky. Well, he's, he's there, thereabouts. So is Osborne, so is Kaplinski, but they are not really chasing that hard. Saf City again, just rolling through the front and coming off the pace. And this is allowing Pucker to stretch his legs. He's at six seconds gap between him and the chasing riders behind. But the riders in front, they're still holding 30 seconds or so to Pucker, who is chasing. They have three riders versus one. More chance to rest, more chance to hide in that group. Now Kaminsky goes. Michael Kaminsky, seven watts per kilo, and this will elicit a response from behind. No one will want to let Michael Kaminsky go. He's chasing at 7.1 watts per kilo. Osborne is doing the same. And Pucker, I think, is going to see some riders coming up behind very, very quickly. He's going to need to watch in that rear view mirror. The riders can change their view as well as us here and if he looks behind him he will see that Kaminsky is on his way he's at three seconds now behind it was six at the uh, first uh, moment but uh, Kaminsky sitting at six watts per kilo that is not a sprint across that is lifting the pace and Kaminsky is going to bring Vujasin he's going to bring Osborne he's uh, going to uh, bring the uh, group across I think to Pucker they're not going to let Hayden Pucker get down the road at the moment. 
and it means that uh, this uh, little bit this little uh, flurry of action from the bunch well it uh, is not uh, going to help that cause in terms of bringing that gap down which it's still hovering around about 30 seconds pucker out of the saddle really stamping down the power a chasing group behind him coming onto his heels pretty quickly. They're going to make contact, I think. In fact, they've just about made contact now with Pucker. And that means that we have the status quo resume with three leaders clear. Vidal Mayer on the front here. So Mayer with the red hair that he has got uh, written in there for company. He's got Bjorklund for company. But at the moment, this is a chasing group. We're in with Mr. X100 on the right-hand side of his screen. They're at 21 k 400 meters down the road, three leaders. You've got May, you've got Bjorklund, you've got Ritter, Ritter in that green skin suit with the red hair, Bjorklund with the white helmet and the yellow jersey. They are the three leaders. They turn that right hand turn. They are going to see the start of the first climb, the Medellin City climb. And that gap, when they hit the base of this climb, I think it's going to sit at 32 seconds at the moment. And they're continuing to push on here. So they've got to keep that effort down. So they've got riders in front. The first rider they're going to see is going to be a Category 2 rider. That's Francis Pino, who's at about six seconds down the road. The gap behind, 32 seconds at the start of the climb. We'll see what that's going to be when we get to the end of the Medellin City climb. Can they stay clear for the duration of the climb? It's highly unlikely because we expect to see a big push coming from the bunch behind. We'll see if they can get themselves back in to gear. Bjorklund at the front of this uh, group at the moment, really winding this up. Mary's answering him. Ritter just comes out of the saddle. He closes down. They're going to go past El Pino here. And Pino is looking like he wants to try and get on the group. Digging into the red, though. Chevron's kick. The three have become four. And that is going to help Pino. He's chasing the Category 2 packer, who currently are at 24k up the road. Category 3 currently a city at 27. And I'll tell you something, the Category 4 riders who are leading, they are a little bit further up the road, but not a huge amount. You can see that there's a real mix in those riders in Categories 3 and 4. Category 2 pack, I'll tell you, this is a huge group coming up here. It is starting to split. We are starting to see the gaps open. We have one leading group up the road. They are a compact group of what looks to be about seven riders. We then have a chasing group of about six to seven. And then we have got a gap back to riders of the quality of Olivier Simmons, of Carsten Mayer and Hoyos. We're in with Hassan Sultan. He's leading the charge here. Try and close that gap down. But he has a group in front, and that group in front with McCarroll Carradine with Mesa are 25 seconds up the road. So he's got his work cut out to get back up to the leaders, but he's on the climb. Can he do this? Well, behind him, chasing them up the climb come the three leaders in Category 1. And at the moment, Jakob Bjorklund is the man who is at the back of the group. Vidal Mayer is at the front, and Ritter in the green is sandwiched in between. So the green sandwich between the two riders in yellow. They're continuing to push here. The gap is down to 24 seconds. And that chasing group, the pack behind, look to be holding a steadier pattern of riding now they've lifted the watts per kilo up they've lifted the power and they're starting to chase so Vujasin Kaminsky Pucker the leading riders chasing the race leading category one and that is Moritz Ritter at the bottom of your screens the rider in yellow just with him is Vidal uh, sorry is Jakob Bjorklund and at the front it's Vidal Mayer so Mayer the Rider just in front of these two. He's the rider with the gap. It's four seconds to Vidal Mayer. He's continuing to push. He wants to keep that gap. And it won't be long before he sees a big bunch of riders in Category 2. They're not going to be the leading group because this is the leading group. We're in with Saad Carradine on the right-hand side of your screens. The leaders in Category 2. Top right, the leader in Category 1. Top left-hand side of your screen. Meanwhile, Taylor Gonsolin goes in underneath the uh, top of the climb in Category 3. Category 4, you can see that they are also going in underneath that climb. This is uh, starting to get a lot closer uh, together at the uh, top of the climb as they come in and through. It should be a faster time 
for the riders in Category 3. And at the moment, the fastest time up that climb section going to Henry East. So East from Category 3 uh, ahead of uh, Tuika. And then it's uh, going to be Agado followed by Rimbog and Goodall. They're the top five in Category 3 on the first climb. In Category 4, Abello, Aka, Ruiz, Newman and uh, McMurtry leading the Category 4 riders up that climb. We will see who is going to take away the uh, top spot when they get to the top of the Bogota climb, that longer climb section. So the left-hand side of your screen, the chasers in Category 1. They are two riders together. Jakob Yorkland in the yellow and in the green is Ritter. They're making the way on the first climb, but hitting the second climb, this is the group that will be leading us up in Category 4. And it's a big pack of riders here. Uh, I think we've got about 12 riders in this group. Just going to keep a double check on that. Yep, 12 riders, of, so Ruiz and above, uh, are going to be uh, taking us up. 12 riders leading in Category 4 at the base of the climb. We will see whether they can stay together. Who is going to break this up? Now, as Emma said at the start of the show, this regularly comes down to a sprint because it levels off at the top of the climb. If you're a climber, you will want to break this clear. You will not want to let this go in together because that is a really, really dangerous thing to do. It means that you're likely uh, to be up against a good sprinter if you've towed them that far, and that can be really, really dangerous. So, right-hand side, 31.4K. They're the leaders in Category 4. Category 3, left-hand side of your screen. These are the chases. I think we have one rider or so up the road in Category 3. Category 2, it's a big, big pack still. Still nobody able to break clear. I suspect they're saving their energy for the top. One man who has been really quite Phil Graves in that group. Uh, looks to me like he's been saving his energy for the upper climb. No saving the energy, though, for Vidal Mayer. He's got six seconds on Jakob Bjorklund and Moritz Ritter. These are the uh, chases. I'll tell you something, they are not going to stay clear for long because we've got Panitza, who is currently at six seconds behind. So is Vujasin. So is Van Elst. Our two chases are going to have the chasing pack behind coming onto the heels. They've dropped two or three riders further back down. But the chasers are about to make contact and it will leave one rider clear at the front. Vidal Mare on the left of your screens, he's got 16 seconds uh, to the nearest chasers. The Packer at 20 seconds. It's going to be close when they get to the top at the moment. They're at 24.6k. The climb finishes at 27.4. Then we have that flat, rolling, bumpy section. It's one of those transition sections between the climbs that you need to be supple post-climb to be able to rev going down the hills, to be able to push going up over the little bumps. And then if you're on the flat, to continue to keep that pace hard. So on those flat, rolling, bumpy sections, it really is key. You can make time and lose time really badly or really well on that section in between, which then sets you up for that final climb. Remember that Bogota climb is 13 and a half kilometers long. The polka dot banner at the end of that one will finish 500 meters before our finish line. So let's take a look at Vidal Mare in a little bit more detail here. Heart rate uh, 166. We look back at Ritter, who was right in with him at the start of the climb. His heart rate's 177. He's sitting in this group in that green skin suit at the back of this pack, and the pressure is on again. We're starting to see a lift at the front, and will Ritter be able to stay with them? He was in the leading group. He doesn't want to be distanced now. He's got to dig in. The chevrons are starting to come out on the right-hand side of the screen. We're in with Mr. X100 at the moment working his way through this group. This pack are working up this climb. They are wanting to bring back Mare. He's at 16 seconds. Talbot, though, has gone for this. It looks to me like he is the rider who is winding up on the front with Jassin Jones. And for Sadie Van Elst, looks like Mr. X100 has gone into this group as well. Uh, looks like Plantero is in there. Johan Noren is in that group. Right hand side of your screen. The gap at the moment, 15 seconds. Vidal Mez, consistent, steady pace, is holding him clear at the moment. He's holding at about 6.3 to 6.4 watts per kilo average. And it means that the group behind, although they might be pushing at 6 to 7, 
They're backing off when they come together. They're going and accelerating up. And at the moment, they need to be really smart about this because Mare is keeping on ticket at the moment. 5.9 watts per kilo, 14 seconds to Rujasin. And the uh, group has taken another second out. He's got a left-hand turn coming, a tight right, then a 90-degree right. And then he will be starting to make his way on those upper slopes of the climb. The consistent gradient here, well, it's 5% at the moment. It will kick a little bit steeper. We're at 6.3 now, 6.8 up to over 7 as we go up here, nine on the inside of the bend, going right the way up to 13% uh, percent in some of these uh, inside turns. He hit 11.5 there uh, in terms of percentage gradient on the inside of the bend. He's got a 90-degree bend coming and behind him. You can see that chase group. They're going around that same section at the moment. They're on that tight right, and the gap has come down 12 seconds now. Back to Tolbert from there. Man needs to keep on pushing. He doesn't want to go too deep. Tolbert is trying to bring him back. Kaminsky is with him. And this is a massive team effort from the Coalition Alpha Jaw squad. Remember, Churik, Tolbert, Vujasin, Kaminsky and Jones all riding for the same squad. Vidal Mare, one of our regular riders from Norway. He's leading the riders out at the moment, but that gap is tumbling. It's down to four seconds now. Kaminsky's got it down to three, and they can see him in front. Right-hand side of his screen, that's Kaminsky. He's going to come up on the shoulder of Vidal Mare. He's going to take the lead here. He goes over the top of Mare. Mare's attack. That was a brave move by him, as long with Ritter, along with Bjorklund, and now Michael Kaminsky. He's into the race lead. Is he going to continue to push or is he going to back off? The top of this climb comes at 27.4K. He still has a group, but there are gaps behind him here. This now is about being focused. Great to see Michael in this section here, actually on this big section of a climb. Because this is tough stuff as they make their way up here. Justin's just gone on to the front. And this is the damage it's doing. Riders of the quality of Mr. X100, Christoph Kroll, Zach Nair, Stefan Van Els, Hayden Pucker, Jakob Bjorklund are all in trouble behind. They're all having to answer this squeeze that's gone on the front. And you can see rider after rider is being pushed back. Vidal Mare is going to be the next of the riders to be distanced out of the back of the group. As with Justin and Kaminsky, a concerted move here by the riders from the Coalition Alpha Joe squad. Two of them on the front. An answer comes from Osborne. Safrazadi's going with them, and they are all over the road. We are just on the very first of our two climbs here. And this is the meddling climb. It's the steeper of the two. An average gradient of 6.1% starting to do its damage in a big, big way. We saw that group get broken down, and we are seeing that push coming on the front now. Mr. X100 goes over the top of Ricardo Panizza. He's going to sit at a tough pace here for Panizza to hold. He can see the riders in front. He'll want to hold them in sight. He can see Daniel Churik, the winner of the finals in uh, March. But we are now into April, and Churik at the moment is a little on the back foot here. It is his teammates in front, so he knows that he has got the opportunity to just sit there and wait a little bit longer. Mr. X100 has to go now. So has Ricardo Panizza. So has Vidal Mare. They know that they are in trouble. They have to get on to that leading group and another move off the front. And it looks to me like this is going to be Lionel Vajasin who's gone. He's gone off the front. Vajasin has got the gap here. And he's now winding it up. Seven and a half watts per kilo to kick clear. He's not far from the top. 27 point four kilometers and the banner is inside that polka dot banner that signifies the end of the climb timed segment the fastest rider up here so far has been alvarez uh, he has the uh, fastest time followed by uh, don and betty they're going to get washed away i think by this leading group who come through who just in leads them through that it's osborne coming through they're starting to split the group mr x100 is not that far behind this group he's got to keep on pushing so it's Osborne from Vujasin, from Safasadi, Kaminsky, Johan, Noren, Tolbert in the group, Plantro in the group, Jones in the group, Churek in there as well. Mr. X100 is chasing behind. He's the 10th rider in Category 1 on the road at the moment, and they've got some work to do. The gap, though, Osborne back to Churek. It is only three and a half seconds, and it's not a lot. Really interesting mix of riders. 
And as they've gone over the top behind, Mr. X100 is, is a big, big gap in front of him. The leaders are continuing to squeeze on. Vujas in South Rosady, Osborne, Kaminsky. Three seconds back to Churek. About the same again to Ollie Jones. And that is that little packet just behind them. They're going to have to work really hard to pull that gap down, though, because this is the uh, flat rolling bumpy section. This is a section that takes us across towards our last line. Mr. X100, left-hand side of your screen. Said Safrasedi, right-hand side. Now replaced by Lionel Vujasin, who is on the front of the group. He's continuing to keep the pressure on. They're just coming over the top. It's a little bit of a depression as you roll down here. Then it kicks again. Mr. X100, just a little bit further around that same right-hand bend. If he can get himself back into contention, he's only seven seconds off Kaminsky at the moment. And uh, that means that he's seven seconds or so off with Jassin and Co. Here, he could well get this group back. And if he can do that, he's going to put himself in contention because the second climb is more the territory for somebody like Mr. X100, who can sit at a really strong pace for a long time. The second climb where we are heading at the moment is 13 and a half kilometers long. And that means it is not going to be easy for riders to accelerate and use it as a sprint session. They've got to be really smart about riding it at a pace. And we know that is the speciality of Mr. X100. Three seconds, the gap between those riders in front. You can just see that pack just above the uh, little eye symbol there. As we watch Mr. X100 go through underneath the foliage here in Colombia. He's going to make the junction. There they are. Those are the wheels he wants. He doesn't want anybody going on the attack now. That's going to make life incredibly difficult as he sprints onto that group. He wants the draft as they come down here. One rider winding it on, going off the front. And he's with Jassin again. He said, no, keep him down this morning. I think he swallowed a load of springs for breakfast or something. The way he's attacking at the moment, he just bounces on the pedals. He kicks down hard. Over the top he goes. He's backed off here. He knows that everybody else will have to do some work. He's on to the descent. There's seven and a half, nearly eight percent descent down here. It's really, really pleasant, this bit, when you get to the top of the climb. You go through that FRB section. You go on to the upper climb. I've had the pleasure of riding this, uh, this climb a number of times and uh, have to say the bit over the bridge, I'm not pushing. I've got to take it a little bit easy at this stage. The uh, leading pack, actually, well, some of them are doing the same here. They're just uh, taking a little bit of a breather, which means that uh, the rest of the riders will need to watch out when they come back because they'll have got a little bit more recovery in than the riders on the front who have been doing the work. Mr. X100, they saw those big numbers over uh, 600 watts to just push himself back in contention. He goes to the front of the group. So 10th and off the back, on to the front he goes. Mr. X100 leading the uh, Category 1 pack as we come through the FRB section. The next section of the climb starts at 31 kilometers. That's where Hassan Sultan is about to get to in our Category 2 race. He's done that left-hand turn at the T-junction. He's made his way around the corner. He's on to the climb proper. He knows he's got 14 kilometers to the summit. It's only a matter of 500 metres or so behind the uh, riders in Category 1 in that leading pack. So they've got Category 2 riders mixed in with them. They don't have the green skin suit of Ritter to confuse things. Ritter being distanced out of that leading pack. The uh, pack at the uh, front. Osborne, Vujasin, Safrasedi, Kaminsky, Noren, Talbot, Plantero, Jones, Turek, Mr. X100. All leading that group through they are the riders who have got uh, that uh, leading group together they are going to be the ones who are in contention we're in with ollie uh, jones one of that uh, really strong coalition alpha jaw squad jones from new zealand right on the front of that pack they're going to be chasing down Hassan Sultan. All the Category 2 riders are going to be trying to chase down the Category 3 riders who are continuing to motor the way up here. This is the final climb. Let's take a look in a little bit more detail. Right-hand side of your screen. Our man's about to hit that second climb there. And you can see it is not just one gradient. We have ramps. We have flatter sections. We have little ripples in there. We then have a couple of sustained sections towards the top. And then it levels out. Remember that the climb segment banner comes in 
at 44.5k of the 45 kilometers of racing. So this 500 meters from the polka dot banner to the finish. And because it is a, a very much reduced gradient, if the groups are together, it'll be about timing. And it's going to be about power in the sprint. But you've got to be in it to win it. And it means you've got to be in with that pack as you come to the top of that climb. And it is the Bogota climb, the second of our categorized climbs. Really, really critical for the riders at the moment that they are in the mix as it starts to wind its way up here. So the riders looking good at the moment. We'll just uh, try and uh, run you through uh, the riders. They're looking uh, good as they come up here. I think uh, we are going to see what is uh, going to be a very tough climb here because we've got a good size group, 10 riders in here. We're in with Jason Osborne, the Olympic medalist in rowing, the uh, professional uh, world-class rider in here in the mix. So is this going to be Osborne's day today? This group are ahead of the chasing pack behind them, about 15 seconds or so back. Category one, left-hand side of your screens. Another big push coming on the front of that group. It looks to me like it could well be Kaminsky, who's gone away again. Just going to take a uh, little look. Who's got his top, but who's gone this time? I'll tell you something, the Coalition Alpha your squad are taking it in turns. It is attack. It is collection. It is attack and it is collection. Mr. X100 is having none of this. He's got the capacity to go after him. He says... You think you're going clear that easy. That is not going to happen. And look at this. He's winding it up. He does not want to let Talbot go down the road. Or should I say up the road here? Because we're on that final climb. He's working really hard here to bring back David Talbot, who's in the uh, yellow chevrons there, trying to stay clear. Now, is he softening up the opposition? Is he going to go for glory? I suspect the team would love him to go take the win here today. He's been a constant thorn in the rest of the riders' sides. Going on the attack, really being an aggressor very early on in the racing. That's the left-hand side of your screen. Right-hand side of your screen, we're just in with Seth Carradine, who is coming up onto the back wheel of Ian McCauley. He's got Clay's Walter and Yuki up in front of him. They are trying to pull back the very front of the race here. Nobody wants to let any gates open up, and this group is starting to come back together again. I think there are two more groups up the road from this group of uh, Sad Carradines further up the uh, climb. And that means that the uh, two groups in front of this will be battling for the uh, win. But every single rider knows they want to be at the very front of the race in their category. They want to be in the front of the race overall. That's a big ask. Remember, category of four set off five minutes in front of category three. Category three set off 10 minutes in front of category two. And category two set off, ten, sorry, five minutes in front of category one. I will get it right, I promise you. Lots of counting. Okay, so 20 minutes separating the very first riders start and the last group of riders. They are our riders in the yellow and the riders in yellow closing down on Hassan Sultan at the moment are David Tobber and Mr. X100. They have what is nearly a 10 second lead at the moment. Back to Mikhail Plantero, the Frenchman chasing in a pursuit at the moment. Mr. X100, and uh, it's going to be David Talbot trying to go clear. And look at this, Hassan Sultan. He's a rider who we know can mix it up. He's been in Category 1 before. He's a rider who can mix it up with these riders, and he has got some serious firepower. At the moment, they're on one of the flatter sections, of course, and Hassan Sultan can use this to stay clear of Anders Bengston, who has been deposited a little bit further down the climb. Next rider is going to be Peter Connell, another rider on some great form at the moment, just being passed up by our Category 1 leaders here, Mr. H100 and David Tobert. And we now go on to that steeper gradient. This is where Hassan Sultan is going to be digging deep to stay with these two riders. The gap back, 10 seconds back to Vajassin, to Jones. It looks like it's going to be about the same time back to Kaminsky at the moment. He's in that same chase impact. So is Vujasin. So is Osborne. Uh, the gap is in. Can they make it stick to the top? That is a big, big ask. But they've got a little bit of help here. Hassan Sultan will be making the most of this. He's in with Tobit. He is in with Mr. X100. And that pace now needs to stay high. If they relax for a second, 
They could fall into the hands of Mikhail Plantero, who's chasing here on the left-hand side of your screen. 12 seconds a gap to the uh, race leaders in Category 1. It's uh, next to nothing to this chasing back behind him, and they are coming hard here. This is not easy to get across. You've got to make a junction, and the draft will be having an effect. Remember, the speed these riders are traveling, we're talking 30 plus kilometers an hour, over 20 miles now if you work in Imperial. At the moment, Hassan Sultan with David Tobin, Mr. X100 on the climb coming up. They've got this last turn, then the tight right, then a winding left. This is absolutely brutal at the moment, and they are trying to stay clear. They're not only trying, they're succeeding. It's gone out to 14 seconds now, nearly 15 seconds to the chasing group. This is some serious damage being done here. We are now approaching the 35-kilometer marker. That will leave them 10K to the finish. It's pretty much all uphill. There's not a lot of flat in there. They've got to hold this pace. They've got to get the pacing right. If you blow here, if you go into the red zone, if you use all of your energy straws, you are going to go downhill faster than a Led Zeppelin. You are going to go backwards faster than my uh, uh, van in reverse. i tell you something, you're going to go back with a uh, right or right because you just are going to go into the red. The energy will stop coming and you are going to be at a virtual standstill. So you'll go from being in the middle of your gears into the easiest gear. So you've got to get the pace right. You've got to sit right on the limit. We know that the uh, two riders at the front here in category, well, Mr. X100 and David Tobber are both really good at sitting and riding at a pace. They're both together now, and that is a formidable duo. The gap has opened up. There are lots of riders in categories two, three, and four between our race leaders and the chasers. And that means that that time gap is going to be very difficult for the chasers to monitor. And I think uh, Said Safasedi has decided he doesn't want to let too many riders get in between. He's now at 6.1 watts per kilo. He's starting to kick clear. Is this where he puts that gap in? So uh, Safrazetti, the uh, rider on the uh, left of your screen, is chasing the two leaders on the right. Category one is absolutely frantic, which is the same as we've seen in categories three and four, as well as in category two. They are dotted all the way over the uh, climb at the moment. I think the very front of the uh, climb, I'm just taking a little bit of a look up here. I suspect we're going to have category two uh, uh, right up there with three and four. And as we uh, make our way up this climb, they are all are scattered across the slopes. 45k this uh, race route. We have a total ascent of 940 meters. We are currently at 575 meters. Now, push comes on. David Talbot could see that the gap was coming down behind. He has kicked hard here. And at the moment, he's dismissed X100. I'm not sure that may be the wisest move. Because uh, I suspect it could well be that they need the strength in depth. However, he's gone for it. And Tobit may want to try and solo to the summit, which is uh, going to be uh, nine kilometers up the road from him. He's chasing hard a little bit further up the road. Well, quite a lot further up the road. Category four. Now, Matthias Coleman is right up there. We saw him earlier on on our screens. This is the leading pack of riders. And uh, as you can see, we have got a good size group. Kalman at the moment in seventh position, just moves over the top of Acker. He's going to make his way up towards the front once again. He is the shaven headed rider up there. Abello is the rider in the polka dot skin suit, is the rider who had the fastest time up the meddling climb. Going to be tough stuff. Let's see how they get on on this upper slopes. Now, back with category one, you can see that we have our race leader. Our race leader is David Tobert. He's got three seconds back to Mr. X100. And at the moment, I think there's going to be about 15, 16 seconds or so. We're going to take a little look on those numbers when we can. It may have been 22 seconds. There. Just taking a uh, little bit of a check through. But it might be 22 seconds, actually, from the chase group to David Tobert. And that means he really has worked his way away from Mr. X100. Mr. X100 currently are trying to stay clear. So Mr. X100 is seven seconds from Sir Carradine. 
Uh, and at the moment, Savage is about to make his way onto those wheels. He's got four seconds to top it, so those time gaps are yo-yoing in and out. We're going to have to see it stabilised before we get a better take on how far in front we have got uh, Tobit it's showing three seconds here and that means that david Tobit, who's currently at 4.8 watts per kilo is taking a little bit of a breather it may be that he knows that he's not going to stay clear for very much longer it may be that he wants to get some assistance but he has his teammate in that chasing group in fact he has multiple teammates in the chasing group behind and at the moment, Tolbert at 3.4 watts per kilo. He gets passed by Mr. X100. Vujasin and Kaminsky are in the chasing group with Jones, Safrazedi and Osborne. They are now the nearest uh, chasers to Tolbert. And that gap now at two seconds. Meanwhile, it's Mr. X100 in front. So the runner you can see on the front of your screen, dead centre with the red streaks so either side of the helmet is Mr. X100. He's on the climb at the moment behind him. Norren and Co. at three seconds. They're on the left-hand side of your screens. Johan Norren with that red hair in there from Sweden. McCarroll trying to stay with him from Category 2. That'll be a great ride if he can hold on to those wheels. That'll help him in his pursuit for victory in Category 2. The longer you stay with that leading group from a uh, category that's set off behind, the faster you're going to move. And McCarroll is tucked right in with that pack at the moment. That is helping him in his uh, current uh, quest to get the best position he can get. Mr. X100, well, he's doing everything he can to stay clear. Five seconds is the gap. They come together. They blow apart. You see a counterattack. It comes together. And then you see the chance to come for Mr. X100, who's sitting at a pace to keep clear, to try and open that gap and stay in front of these riders for as long as possible. They're starting to thread the way between the Category 4 riders in red. Sean Driscoll seeing Mr. X100 go past him. Next up should be Ishmael Noguera. Noguera should be the next rider who sees a Category 1 coming on to his heels in the shape of Mr. X100 who has three seconds from Ollie Jones. He has two seconds from Daniel Turek. He's got, uh, it looks like Safrazedi now coming up, and this gap is coming down. It's at one second. They're going to be on his heels any second now, and this group is going to come back together once again. So, shovel the cards, people through the cards. They've all gone back. They're pulling back into the hand. They've now got to decide when they're going to go. Kaminsky in here. 37.8 now, 37.9k covered for Michael Kaminsky. He's in this group. When will we see Kaminsky put in a dig? Will he go on the offensive again? His teammates have. We've seen Tolbert. We've seen Vajassin. We've seen Kaminsky up there. We've seen Jones up there. They are all pushing to stay in or go clear with this group. Johan Norum, we know, well, he loves the climb of 13.9K. He knows that uh, that is going to suit him down to the ground. He probably wants it a little bit steeper for a little bit longer. Will he be the man who makes the moves? Their left-hand side of your screen, right-hand side of your screen at 42 and a half kilometers. The leader's on the road. Well, at the very front is Matus Kalman. Then Simon Acker is on his heels. You saw Acker in the, those rewinds earlier on, right in the mix with uh, Kalman. The leaders in Category 4 at 42.6Ks. The leaders in Category 3, well, you can see at the moment, Kansara and Gonsolin there at 41.2K. We've got 39.5K covered for Betty at the moment. And Mr. X100's group in here, the leading group in Category 1, they're at 38.4. So at the moment, we have what is a 3... Uh, uh, 4.2K covering the whole distance of these riders. So 4.2K, that's from 5K covering our riders from Category 1 leaders to the Category 4 leaders on the road. And the Category 4 group have come back together again. Montoya, Henao, Caro, Abello, Kalman, they are all in that group. Category 2, well, look at this. Phil Graves is on the attack here from Betty Jaseo. Betty, we saw earlier on, looking strong. He's on the heels of the veteran rider of the My Wusha Race Club, Phil Graves, on the attack. A man who's uh, beaten me out on the road on a time trial. Not uh, 
uh, all that long ago. Looking very, very good indeed. And Graves at the moment, he is uh, looking strong, but Betty is answering him. And Giselle Ricardo, Betty looking to hold those wheels. He does not want to let Phil Graves go. They have got 5K or just under 5K to the finish. It's going to be a battle royal between these riders. And if they relax for a second, they're going to get chased down. Category one leaders, they're further down the mountain. They're just coming up uh, over 39 kilometers. Left hand side of your screen, that group back together again. Bottom left hand side, the leading group of category three riders. Kansar is right up there. We've got uh, uh, Yada Esteven Perez in the mix. We've got Ryan Giuliano in the mix, and they are absolutely nailing this at the moment. Now, Daniel Turek on the move. And yet again, the Coalition Alpha Jaw squad are kicking on. Five riders in the top ten last week in the My Wish Sunday Race Club Finals. We're going to see five riders inside the top ten. Can they beat what they did last time? Can they beat that uh, sweep of the top three? Can they put them all together? They would dearly love to do so. And I think absolutely all the rest of the riders would love to stop them. Chirik Kaminsky, along with uh, Jones, with Jassin. And I'm going to see if they can be up there with Talbot, but will they be able to do so? All four categories now making the way up in and towards those final five kilometres of racing. The furthest down the road are the riders on the bottom right-hand side of your screens in Category 4. The Category 1 of the riders who are moving fastest overall. They should have the fastest race time. Uh, at the moment, Phil Grace, well, he's the man who's got the fastest uh, time so far in Category 4. Two because Graves has got Betty at one second. Betty's trying to answer this. He's really got to push on now. If he can't answer this, he's going to be in big trouble. He really, really has to push now. If this gap goes, he will be in major trouble because you cannot let a gap open. It's so hard to close them down here. Chirac, though, has a gap in Category 1. He's ahead of Talbot Osborne and adjusted by about three seconds. Norrin is in here, but the group is fracturing. This is danger moment. The alert uh, signals are going off in everybody's head here. Kaminsky, Safazetti, that's at the back of this group, moving the way up through it now at some speed. Are we going to see Kaminsky roll through and attack on again? He's come through at pace. Will he be able to continue to uh, push his way up to the front? Going to be very tricky finish this. You don't want to be in a sprint on the run. And it's such a gamble to getting your timing right. Remember, it levels off at the top. There are 500 metres from this banner, the pole banner, to the finish to go. So we have uh, got 500 metres to go. Caro is leading it out at the moment. He has got a chasing group of five riders behind him. Pino, Abello, Aka, Montoya and Kalman are there. Hedo is 23 seconds back. He's not going to feature in this. So five riders chasing. Now Abello is in that polka dot skin suit. We know Aka has got a big kick on him when it comes into the finish. He's going to need it. 400 metres to go. Time is running out. They know that they have got to go around this sweeping right and then a tight left and it pays to ride. This climb repeatedly, it pays to race it to know exactly where to go, where to kick. Caro is still holding them off, but now they're starting to wind. They're going to come up on his shoulder. Will he be able to answer them? Abello the first, I think, to make contact, but Caro has gone again. He's gone early. He's seen the banner. Can he stay clear? 6.3 watts per kilo. Aka is kicking at 7.8. He's the man in position two. Abello is in the box. Polkadot skin suit, they're going to sweep by Caro. Abello is on the front in the Polkadot. Is he going to hold him? Will it be Aka? Aka takes it on the line. I think that's going to be Aka from Abello from Caro. Your top three here today on the Mai Wu Sunday Race Club Qualifier Race number one. What a race finish. We uh, predicted a sprint. It is confirmed as Aka, Abello and Caro. Followed by Montoya, Kalman and Pino. Great racing in Category 4. Now, Category 3, Rimburg is going for this. Can Henry East, the man uh, from uh, New Zealand, pull him back? Dutch is coming hard on his heels here. The Category 4 riders have made it look easy. Can Category 3 come back uh, to them? They're on those final few hundred metres here. This is the run for the line. 
Dari Dutch is leading this out. Staples is in too. He's on his heels. We've seen them be raw before. Dari Dutch is holding it. Can he hold it? It's going to be so tight on the line. That's a photo finish between Dari Dutch and Staples. East comes through in third place. We're going to have to uh, take a uh, check on the uh, cameras, I think, for that one, because that was incredibly close as they came in through the finish. And it looks like Dai Dutch has taken it by 0 0.001 one of a second from Jack Staples. So Andre Dai Dutch by 0 0 0.001 one of a second from Jack Staples in two. Henry East in three. Eric Rimborg coming through in fourth place. So great racing categories sort of one, two, three, and four. Categories three and four are finished. Category one and two still to finish at the moment. It's Daniel Turek who is leading them out. He had three seconds. He's now got six seconds to his teammate, Vujasin. That's the left-hand side of your screen. The race for Category 1. The race for Category 2 on the right-hand side of your screen. And Betty has pulled back Phil Graves. Phil Graves has thrown pretty much the kitchen sink at Betty today. It bounces off him just like he's got armour on at the moment because he's able to answer all of the moves being made by Graves. He's going to have to pull out another move from the School of Dad Dancing here today to be able to go clear, to dance his way clear of Betty. They are coming up on to more riders very shortly. I think Cy Bradley in Category 3 is going to see the Category 2 leaders come up to him with Phil Grace and Jaseil Abeti. The two riders who are leading this through in Category 2. In Category 1, well, it is all change again in this race because Daniel Churek has not only been pulled back, he has been passed by Johan Noren. Noren with the red hair here, a man who is on superb climbing form at the moment, an absolutely consummate esports rider, looking good at the moment. He's really winding it on the front. So it's Noren from Turek. They are the two riders in front of Khan Kane here in Category 2, immediately behind him. Bujassin is trying to close the gap down. He's at four seconds back on the two riders. And this is going to be incredibly close as they come in to awards the line because I think Johan Nor at the moment is trying to spoil the coalition now for your party. Will he be the man who poops their party? He's got two kilometers to get to the finish. It is just over one kilometer for Phil Graves and uh, Giselle Betty on the right of your screen. We've seen sprints in Category 4, sprints in Category 3, a separation of first and second place in Category 3 by 0.001 of a second. It is going to be incredibly close between these riders if it comes to a sprint. But at the moment, Norrin and Turek have got a little bit of a gap, nine seconds. Yep, nine seconds. That is substantial with one and a half kilometers to go. Let's see if they can hold it. We'll come back to them in a few seconds' time because we are now in. This is Mano a Mano, to quote the uh, great Hugh Graves. Hugh uh, Porter, sorry, in here. Hugh Graves, Hugh Porter. As Phil Graves puts the move in. Betty was giving it the I'm done now. This is me dead. I'm not sure I believe him because Betty has been able to answer. He suddenly pulled a seven watts per kilo out. He was so busy throwing the emotions down. I think he's going to have to answer Graves' kick here. So Phil Graves goes 4.6 watts per kilo. Betty's coming back to him in the green. So the young man in the green jersey, the black shorts, category two rider, chasing down the man who has taken the polka dot skin suit. And that is Phil Graves. That's the rider in front. And Graves at the moment will be leading this out in to the right hand, left hand uh, bend here. Will he make it stick? And we've got a slight right hand bend. You can see Graves at the moment. He's got fractions of a second. He's starting to wind now at 7.3, 7.4 watts per kilo before this race. Phil Graves told me he was going to go all out for the win. Can he make it count? He's on the attack. He's on the move. Graves is leading this out. It looks like Phil Graves is going to do what he says, but Betty's coming behind him. Graves is going to hold it. Phil Graves, he puts his money where his mouth is. He takes the win here in Category 2 ahead of his breakaway rival. That is Josiah Betty. Great riding. Graves in one, Betty in two in Category 2. Now, we're going to see a two-up sprint here for the win in Category 1. Because they're still clear. 
Daniel Turek and Johan Noren. Daniel Turek, white helmet. In front of the two riders here, you've got Johan Nuren with the red bandana on. He's chasing at the moment Turek. Turek winding it up with 500 metres to go. And Johan Nuren needs to answer this quickly. Turek's up to nine and a half watts per kilo. Nuren is at 7.7. Turek is in front. And you look back now, that gap, it's huge. Noren, I'm not sure he's got anything left to answer this. They're going to come around the left-hand turn and see the gantry. And either Noren's legs have fallen off or he has misjudged his big style because Daniel Turek is going to take this in style if he continues to push. He is Daniel Turek in Category 1. He's going to come across two weeks. He took the win in the finals last week. He's going to take the win in Qualify 1. Daniel Turek, your winner on the Maiwu Sunday Race Club in Category 1. It's going to be a second place as they come in and uh, through the line because it is going to be a kick in and over for Johan Noren. The winning time today, one hour, 13 minutes, 50 seconds from Turek with Noren coming across 4.8 seconds behind. It's going to be a third place at four line over Jess in fourth, going to Ollie Joseph fifth. To say it's going to be a sixth place for Michael Kaminsky. This is the run for the line immediately behind. I think we are going to see Mr. X1 to be the next of our category one riders come in and over the line. I think he is going to be in what is ninth place. Just waiting for those screens to update. As they make their way through, Daniel Turek taking the win. Johan Noren in second, Lionel Vujasin in third. The coalition Alpha Joel with first, with third, and with fourth. With Noren really breaking up those third three. Then you've got Safazadi, Kaminsky, Osborne, and Tolbert with the top nine rounded out by Mr. X100. They're going to be followed uh, in through by uh, Stefan Van Elster, Ricardo Pernitza, Vidal Mayer, Michael Plantero, Christoph Kroll. And as they continue to come in through the line. Don't forget, all of the results at the moment are unofficial. They are live as we are racing. They will be unofficial until all the results are verified. And you can find all those results on mywoosh.com slash results. My name is Matt Payne. Please do give me a follow. It's at Matt Fix of Payne. Make sure you give Emma a follow at Biking underscore Emma. Don't forget, you can switch straight across now and either watch from the start or join partway through with me as I make my way to join Emma for the women's race. And remember, next week, we are back at the standard timing a few hours earlier. Just jump on the website for details. I hope to see you there. A massive thank you. To you for watching, for our riders for making the uh, uh, the uh, action interesting and to more to the point and forcing me to eat a hat at some point in time because that was from the gun. A thank you to the team behind the scenes. But from me, Matt Payne, and all of the team, stay safe. Ramadan Mubarak. <laughs>